Hello everyone. I'm back. <laughs> if you're on this page, you're going to get a lot of Amy this week. Lots of Amy. So I am back with a story of hope. And I see you're already here, Jen. I'm going to bring you on in just a second. Um, I think Jen just request to join me live. Do you see that little plus button at the bottom of your screen? But I am gonna bring on one of my clients who I worked with back in 2020 and 2021. And she came to me at the age, well, I'll let her fill you in too, but um, she was 43 at the time and was about to turn 44. And we'll fill you in on the story, but yeah, she's got a healthy, beautiful little one at home now. And for those of you that are tuning in, um, you can ask questions as it pertains to this case. Also, be active in the comments because I will be giving away a scholarship uh, to the Yes, You Can Get Pregnant e-course at some point during this live story of hope. So lots of questions, lots of comments. Let me know you're here. Let me know you're here so I can see that. And let me see. Um, okay, we have no requests. So Jen, you have to request to join me live. Do you, let me see if I can invite to join. I'm going to invite you to join. Um, let's see, where are you? There we go. I've been fine, my love. So now accept that. Oh, there you are. You're in there. Yay. Okay. Accept. Here we go. I haven't seen you in so long. Hi. I know. Hi. How are you? Great. How are you? I am good. Oh, it's so good to see your face. Thank you so, so good much. To see you too. This. Of course. Thank you for asking me. Well, I know last year you were in like the throes of newbornhood. I, no, yeah. not like no. it was. Yeah, the same you were time. About I to have a baby. About yeah. to have a baby. Yeah. 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 So tell us how 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 is everything? <laughs> it's great. I mean, I can't believe that we're about to hit a year, which is crazy. I never thought that I would be one of those parents that says it flies by, but it flies by, and yeah. you know, it's crazy. I mean, it just it's been the best year. Um, it has been, um, you know, it's it's been so special. She's incredible, yeah. beyond anything that we could have ever imagined. We're just, you know, we're blessed. We are. We're yeah. so. Blessed. Ever. You're loving it. You're loving it. Yeah. Um, and so I just read through all our notes and then of course yeah. your little summary too. But um, I guess, you know, you've watched these before when you were on your journey, I'm sure, of the stories of hope and received inspiration. So, I mean, that's really the plan to just kind of really um, guide and support everyone on here who's watching and listening. But what I have here on the back end... Um, was of course you came to me you were 43 about to be 44 you'd had a miscarriage mm -hmm. um and then I you had also go ahead i just had had it you just had had it mm -hmm. and then you also had which i forgot until i read notes which is why i'm glad i had notes um the frozen eggs from 2016 and 2020 and I think that's really like an interesting highlight too especially for women in that like oh I should have froze eggs I should have done that tell us about what happened there well so back in 2016 I was single and I you know like we hear it's a great insurance policy so go freeze your eggs what I didn't know then that I know now is all of the things that I could have done to prepare prepare better my chances. Um, so I had five eggs frozen then and then cut to when I was 43. Yeah. Um, with my now fiance, we decided we wanted to start a family. And at 43, I also, again, didn't know anything also was like, the only option for me is IVF, you know, th there's no other option if I want to get pregnant. So we went back to the fertility clinic. Same team, same doctor, same nurse, everyone. And it was wildly different just because of my age um, going in that time. But again, not a lot of prep done. It was yeah. just, you know, like don't drink, don't smoke, you know, eat some vegetables. But that's <laughs> it. And um, 
a lot of age shaming, which yeah. we'll talk about because that was so yeah. much. Of our yeah. work. It was a big piece, but it was, it was like so much more than I could have ever imagined. It wasn't just statistics and all the things that they should tell you, you know, and that you need to know going in being over 40 or over 35, I guess. But it was more than that. It was really like your chances are so slim, no hope, you know, and my partner is nine years younger and it was like, that was celebrated and I was, you know, made to feel yeah. old. Yeah. Like that, you know, why am I even trying this? And so we did the second egg retrieval and um, our intention was obviously to take those original five eggs from years yeah. before, create embryos, and then, you know, create embryos from the second egg retrieval and we lost everything. So, um, you know, I thought insurance policy, like even if it doesn't, work with that egg retrieval because it wasn't feeling good the whole way through. I was like, well, at least I have the other five, but those um, all died on defrost yeah. and the three embryos lasted three days. And so everything was gone. And, um, you know, our follow-up appointment was basically like, you have about a 1% chance because of your age, you know, um, it's time to think about donor eggs. If we won't do IVF again. Um, if you really want to do something, it's cheaper for you to do IUI. So you could try that if you want to go down that road. So it was, you know, devastating. Yeah, devastating. Yeah. Not what I knew of with fertility clinics, you know, you just thought that, well, even though I'm older, we can get through this, but you know, that wasn't the case. So I knew walking out, like if there was one thing I was sure of through my whole journey, walking out of that door, I knew I was never going back and I was going to figure it on my own one way or another, which, you know, leads me to you. Yeah. I have chills. Um, yeah. yeah. Cause when I met you, there was like, it was, you were so, fr you said, I'm so frustrated over the lack of resources and the info about egg freezing. The docs have been super age shaming. Um, and you did say, I've worked through a lot of that. I know I can still do this. And then you were working with a naturopath. You read my books. Yeah. Um, you basically, as you wrote in your notes, she did the egg quality diet before I actually had the book out, right? You were like, you were one of those. Um, yeah. It came out, I think, yeah, it came out last year. So you were, you were like six months pregnant when it was published, I feel like, yeah. <laughs> I own all of your books now. I still bought the quality diet. Hey, you never know. I mean, so, so, but then, so fast forward, then you decided, okay. And then you tried on your own and you got pregnant the first time you tried. First time I tried. So it was probably six weeks after um, mm -hmm. the retrieval. I'd started seeing a naturopath. He was fertility focused. I then found one that was fertility focused and amazing. Um, but he, you know, tested all of my hormones. Yeah did all the blood work, which I'd never had done before and made some tweaks and I got pregnant, carried that to eight weeks and then had a miscarriage. But, you know, prior to that, I found two things. I found a chapter in a book about getting pregnant over the age of 40. And I found, yes, you can get pregnant. But literally other than that, there was nothing. And so, you know, yes, you can get pregnant was what started me on my path because before that, I literally didn't think it was possible, you know? Now I feel like there's a little bit more out there, but even yeah. just a couple of years ago, it felt yeah. so Yeah, two years ago. Yeah, um, and so yes, you can get pregnant was, I think, you know, mine was just as much as like supplements and diet and everything, the emotional part of it for me, having something that like I felt empowered by with that book changed my course because, I'd gone through so much at the fertility clinic that you know, knowing that like women get pregnant over 40 and a lot was just like, it was liberating for sure. And, mm -hmm. and then we started working together and you dove into the e-course and all of that. And I remember uh, one of the homework assignments while I was going through it, and but you wrote it too in your notes of, um, what did I say? Go back to that. 35 year old girl makes me emotional and process the grief um, during that time in the years to follow forgiveness of yourself. Um, and you said, yeah, forgiveness of myself is really coming up um, because you had a lot of like, 
I, I don't know, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think like regret of like, oh, why didn't I do this younger? But then you wouldn't have been with the man you're with now. And you know, like all the things, but there was a lot of that, you know, you, you were in your head of like, I, I can't believe I missed this opportunity. I can't believe I missed this boat. Yeah. Um, and being really hard on yourself. And then we, we unpacked of like the forgiveness um, I said, I recommend soothing the younger version of yourself. So there was some like inner child. And then you said, I wouldn't have been a good mom back then. Um, and I thought that was like, just such an interesting, you know, perspective shift of like, this is the right time. And, and you started right. to really take ownership of that from what I remember of our work. Totally. I mean, yeah. And looking back, it was, that's exactly what it was. You know, I obviously could have done it and I would have loved it. I've always wanted to be a mom, mm -hmm. but you know, it just, I, this happened at the right time of my life, you know, and it all worked out the way that it should. I mean, obviously with Carl, my partner and Ruby, but just me, you know, feeling yeah. the way that I am and who I am. And so doing that work with you, I was holding on to so much of, you know, watching all of my friends have their babies over the years and just kicking myself constantly for not doing it sooner and not figuring out another way and all of these things and it had passed me by and you know that combined with letting go of the age shaming at the fertility clinic those two things i had to really work on and really put to bed before yeah. i was able to receive ruby like i just yeah. you know, feel that way yeah and uh, what would you say about the diet stuff i mean how hard was it you know yeah. you yeah it wasn't that hard. Like, I mean, <laughs> it was, you know, I always say that my miscarried baby and Ruby saved my life because, like, just healthy, being healthy. Like, I think when you click into that and you don't make it about trying to get pregnant and, you know, and get so overwhelmed by all of the things that we all have to do through this process to try and get pregnant. And you think of it as, like, I'm getting healthy. Like, I'm, you know, I'm... I'm 40, I, you know, 43 now, I'm 45, almost 46. And I'm in like the best condition possible mm -hmm. because, you know, I'm eating all of the right things. People thought I was crazy when I would be like, I no longer sugar, soy, dairy, alcohol, coffee, like everything <laughs> Everyone was like, and I'm in the restaurant industry. So yes. like, really, like alcohol I'm, is a job for you, right? <laughs> and food, you and know, food, yeah. And it just, we found a way around it and we found like a beautiful way to it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think having a partner who, I mean, he's a chef, so like I do have that going for me, but yeah. oh, he was so on board. And I think that that just helps, but you're so clear about what the diet is and why you're doing things that you do. And I think that for me, I need to know those things. Like you can't just yeah. tell me to give up sugar. Like yeah. I know what hormones that's impacting and like all of those things and that's why like body belief was just so again empowering because it was like oh this makes so much sense and I would send it to so many people who had autoimmune you know mm -hmm. and be like there it's so clear how she lays it out though there's the why yeah which is great and you you know, I feel like your cycles were pretty rock on. Um, even, even still, your progesterone was healthy. Even your FSH and AMH were in good ranges. Your estrogen was a little high. I remember that being like a concern for you yeah. too. So we like tweaked your supplements. And the natural path was also covering a lot of it. But like, you know, like everyone else I work with, you were doing the cod liver oil and you were doing, I think, the liver pills and your prenatal and all the things. Um, but and, all I got yeah. you like before we even started working together, you know, that's how I yeah. originally had my supplement plan together. Um, and then my, I mean, my naturopath made the tweaks, not yeah. round, you know? Yeah. And then we put you on herbs. I remember that too. Mm -hmm. um, and then like checking in on your red flags. It was like um, your, your weight shifted. I remember that was a big thing. Your digestion got much better. You said my digest digestion um, has been awesome for three weeks, but we also got, you also got on thyroid meds too. Remember yeah. your thyroid, of course you remember your thyroid was a little off. Um, and then um, broccoli extract powder. I'm looking at all that. And like some of the supplements, right? You were on the dim and I said, do it for one month, took you off white Vitex for one month. Um, and then um, let's see. So at, 
that point, that was February 2021. So at that point, you're what, 44? Uh -huh. right? And I then you email me on February 14th, 2021. It happened. So we were working together at that point because your, your dad passed in the middle. And so you took a little bit of a break. And that was, you know, a lot of stress, right, on you yeah. and your family. Um, so it had been basically a year and a half, I think, since we'd been working together. Mm -hmm. And I think even with the stress of your dad, it was like you, you fell off a little bit, but you basically, I'd say you were probably following the 80-20 rule and sticking to most everything. Yeah. I mean, and I, I, again, credit all of this to getting through that too. I mean, it was the hardest thing in my life that I've ever gone through ever. And, um, you know, the miscarriage, COVID, my dad, like, and all of this, it was a really brutal year. And this was such a bright spot, like to get my health on track and to, to feel really like confident in what I was doing and have a focus. Yeah. That just it, the work, like it all got me through, you know, a really dark time that just wasn't dark because of all of this, you know, which yeah. was, um, yeah. And then February happened. And I remember we were on a call. Yeah. Looking at my Uva and that's right. And I said, yeah. your projection was super high. Right. Didn't I? And um, I was wanted to take it. Yeah, I just said temps are still up 15 days DPO. Progesterone looks great. And then um, I think I said get on the baby. We had put you on the baby aspirin for the luteal phase. But I think you hadn't yet taken it. Because I remember I said I recommended a baby aspirin once positive. I wrote that in all caps. And then four days later, she messages me. It happened. This is actually my second test. I took the first one on Friday but another one today. So that was on Sunday. I can't believe it. And while it's obviously still so early, I know I'm in such a different place than last time. And while we hadn't talked a, for a bit before last week, I want to say thank you for the support to be this age and have had a miscarriage. It's scary to get back out there again and try, especially if you talk to anyone else about pregnancy over 40, but you always put me at such ease with your positivity. Um, and then the positive pregnancy test. I love it. And so I think we just tweaked. I said, get on the baby aspirin, stay on the progesterone, drop some of the other things. And, and then, yeah, I mean, it was pretty uneventful pregnancy wise for you, right? It was, I mean, I had a couple of minor complications and of course you're high risk, no matter what at this yeah. age, but I know. yeah, it's just, my body felt so good. It just, um, it, it felt great. Like I wasn't to also, you know, be this age and you look at miscarriage statistics and all of that. Like I didn't worry about any of that this second time around just because I was like, I've done everything that I can do to yeah. prepare my body, which um, felt really good. I mean, it was scary and stressful. That first trimester is no joke. Yeah, no joke. But and did you get shamed at all then? Or were people pretty cool with you? They were, you know, they were great, actually. Like, it was more, it flipped, which was really interesting. Like, my partner and I, um, we commented on that, like, quite a bit when I would go in for my scans. Like, everyone was like, way to go. Like, you're strong. Like, this is amazing, you know? And it was so different because mm -hmm. I think I may have even told you this. When I had my miscarriage, you would ask me if I had tested after. Right, right. I remember even. this you're, too, you're old. Like, that's why you had a miscarriage. And I, and I remember you being like, that's not necessarily why they should have tested it. So I switched mm -hmm. OB. My OB was like, so supportive and, you know, amazing about my age, but it's just, it's wild. Like how, mm -hmm. again, information is out there and um, how you're made to feel when mm -hmm. clearly. So how old were you when you gave birth? You were I was 44, but I turned 45 a month, a month almost exactly to the day later. Wow. So, yeah. And then tell me how I helped name Ruby. I don't remember this. You, I didn't know if you did. So I was, um, my dad was born in July. So his birthstone is Ruby. And I had a Ruby necklace on with one of our last conversations. I think it was actually our last face-to-face -face conversation. And you were pregnant. And, yeah. Yeah. And, um, I, we thought I was pregnant, but... I, wasn't I hadn't tested yet and you were like I love that necklace I told you the story and you're like can you imagine if you named her Ruby no don't don't name her Ruby and <gasps> I, 
so sweet. Yeah. Aww. And so her name is Ruby James. My dad's first name is James. So that's, yeah, her name. I so love it. I know. I, love it. I, that is funny. I didn't say anything until we knew that we were having a girl. And then I told my, you know, fiance the name. And he was like, that's it. That's definitely it. So. Aww. I felt like. I mean, too, having had my dad pass away. I mean, I, I, even for us, it was like we had that kind of connection in that sense yeah. of like, I got that part of it, too. You know, Absolutely. I got the age thing. I got, you know, I feel like I understood all that. Um, yeah. yeah. But here she is now, Ruby James. I love it. Here she and is. so, you know, I mean, I feel like for you, I, I, the other thing I wanted to say, too, is like when you were digging into the e-course, I remember you were saying like, um, some of the emotional work ones, like the surrender piece was the hardest for you, but like learning how to, um, I guess, surrender and, and give over control and just like, I don't know, maybe you can speak to that a little bit too for some of the girls. Yeah, I mean, I think that a miscarriage makes it so hard to surrender control because yeah. you're so terrified. And, you know, and also I'm, a business owner, I run like, I'm someone who likes to have control over things. And you know, when it is so unbelievably out of your control, for me, it was just reading through everything that you had put doing the mantras, like, really, you know, sitting with it every day, just being like, I have to just trust, like, I have to trust I had an instinct to, to go natural. I had an instinct to, you know, all of the pieces fell into place. I had an instinct to reach out to you, even though I could have done the e-course, like all of the things that, you know, I just had to trust that I was doing all of the right, taking all the right steps to let it happen, however it was going to happen. And it's the hardest thing in the entire world to do when you want something so much yeah. and you've been let down before, you know, but you just have to surrender and, you know, it, it changed, it shifted a lot for me. Um, yeah. I found out today that a friend of mine is pregnant and I was like, you have to just trust, you know, she's nervous because she had had a miscarriage and I just said, just trust it. Like yeah. you have to let go at some point and just know that it's, it's all working. Um, yeah. the way that it's supposed to. That's it. And it's, it's easy to say in retrospect, but I also think you really got there before Ruby came through where it was just this thing of like, okay. And I think, you know, with your dad and, and the stress of the year and all that, it was like, I'm just going to keep doing the best I can do. And I'm just gonna, you know, let this unfold. And, and then it did. And I love it. Yeah. No, I mean, and you know, for so many women out there, one of the hardest things, especially when you get to, you know, our age is that you've watched so many babies being born you watch so many people announce their pregnancies, you, you know, all of those things. And it's so hard to let go of that. But doing that work, I think that was the most important work that I did, where it was just like, stop beating yourself up or stop thinking that you're not enough or, you know, all of those pieces. And, you know, again, we did such great work, like supplement wise and diet wise and all of that. Yeah, but I of think course. Emotional and mental piece, you just get so caught up in, just you know the worst thoughts and, head mm -hmm. and all of that when you're going through this and I think it's just the my the you know the mental health part of it and the um trying to just get through that emotional piece is so critical for for the success of this I agree and it is you know when I talk about that I mean you know in the teachings and the e-course too of like there's that sense of safety that we need to create in the body. And it's not like just safety nourishment wise from the diet or supplement perspective, but that safety from the mental inflammation perspective, right? That like, yeah, I'm running out of time. I got to go, go, go. I got to do, do, do. You know, the doctor says there's no hope, right? It's just, it's like that constant battle in there. And, and I feel like with you too, I remember you just kind of hitting this stride where you were like, all right, this is where I'm at. This is what I want. I'm going to, you know, and I don't know. And then it did all. And then, it, yeah, I'm, but, but it is so important. I can't stress that enough to people who are trying. It's, you know, don't think it's just about checking all of the boxes of the yeah. diet. So important. Don't get me wrong, but like, just relax as much as you possibly can to, you know, let it. And like, 
when we were talking about the diet earlier and was it hard, it, it wasn't hard once I let it just be a part of my life. Like, yes. you know, and supplements, once I just let it be a part of my life, it all clicked and it was just so much easier to do it. Yeah, I love that. I know. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I feel like you've hit on so many important parts, but anything you want to share with all the women out there watching right now who, yeah, who get yeah. it? You know, I understand. Um, it's a long road. It's not an easy one. We're all different. But, um, you know, I think creating a team, that's something that we didn't talk about. But that was like, yeah. and I know you talked about that so much, like creating your team is so important. You need to have that support. Mm -hmm. um, that's just critical. And, and sometimes it's not the people in your life. It's the, you know, it's your acupuncturist. It's Amy. It's yeah. like, yeah. web. It's hired help. It's like the bump squad. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You need those people um, to really support you through it and who know you can do it. And yeah. You know, and keep you accountable. Right. I feel like yeah. that's it too. Of just like, okay, and you're going to send me the food diary and we're, we're doing this. And did you yeah. take the supplements? But then also even for you of like, the second you got that, well, you got the positive on Friday, but then two days later messaging me and like, okay, now what? Like, what's the next step? What are the next plan? Um, but yeah, just having that, that tribe, right? You know, I always talk about that of like, who gets you, who can support you and then almost delegating it out. So you don't have to do all the thinking because that's completely overwhelming. Well, I was going to say, I mean, that is so overwhelming. Like the, the, the food and the supplements is hard at first, you know? And yeah. so having some sort of a guide. Yeah. And like you said, accountability is huge. Like having the structure, I'm a big structure person. And so, <laughs> you know, having that laid out for me, is was, I, I, you can get so lost on Instagram and online. Yes. And so picking a path is really important. Not yes. like, like I, at the beginning, I was like, I want to work with, 20,000 people you know, like <laughs> looking at and you were the only one that like kept coming up kept coming up coming up where I just was like okay everything just aligns so well with how I'm feeling you know but it's it's tempting to see everything in the beginning like to see all of these different options and you think that this is going to work and this is going to save you you know whatever and, and work for you but um to really stick on your path and choose your team is really really, really important and let them do the work and support yeah, with, with you. you. Yeah. But like also you, you know, and, and I think everybody listening is saying that to everybody's commenting on how strong you are and um, you, you showed up for yourself, you know, and I, I that's what I always, um, I, I feel like I do always get to see in my clients, which is a beautiful thing. And I think that is that piece that like the glue, you know, where it's like, all right, I have this team, I have this partner, you know, we have this plan, but it still falls on you to, to be honest with yourself and to do the best you can do. But I do remember too, like at one point, I forget when it was, but it was like earlier on, but you were like, if I have a piece of cheese, like it's not the end of the world. It's not going to like yeah. make or break my fertility, you know? And it was like, yeah, so let's like live with that. Let's be as um, like easy on ourselves as we possibly can and allow ourselves to be human um, but while still not beating yourself up, right? Instead, you started to be kinder and more compassionate to yourself and then allowed yourself to, you know, like you said, like not do it for baby, but do it for you. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, and stress is a killer. So it's like you stress about it, that piece of cheese. Like that was really hard for me in the beginning because you just go like full board. Hold on. But you just have to cut yourself some slack, give yourself some grace, you know, know that this isn't going to happen overnight. This is a journey mm -hmm. for sure. Yes. Um, you know, and just be kind to yourself. Like there, there's nothing mm -hmm. more important than that. Trust and be yeah. kind. Yeah. Trust and be kind. I love it. I love it, Jen. Um, thank you so much for sharing all this. And so for everything. Oh, I'm just so, I'm so happy for you and for Ruby, for her coming through. I knew she would. And it's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. It's been, yeah. like I said, it's been wonderful. And I owe so much of it to you. So I'm, you know, eternally grateful. Oh, you and did it. I Good just up. like Thank all you. the women that you help and the couples that you help are so lucky to work with you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I, I enjoy it. I enjoy the work, you know, it's know. fun. Um, the, uh, the end results are so fun. <laughs> 
yeah. getting the positive pregnancy test in the email and just, you know, seeing, um, seeing you make it through a pregnancy with a healthy baby and all that. It's just, it's the best, it's the best job in the world. It really is. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, I appreciate it. Okay. Yeah. I appreciate you. Um, I'm going to give away a scholarship right now. You can hang on one second, Jen, and then I'll let you go. Um, so Almy, Al, I don't know how to say, A-L-M-Y, A-L-M-Y. I'm going to say Almy, Almy. You're going to email. I see you on here. Um, you are chosen for the scholarship for the Yes, You Can Get Pregnant e-course. And so email my team, Beth at amyrop.com, and she will give you the details on claiming the scholarship. So this is when Jen worked with me, she got access to the Yes, You Can Get Pregnant e-course as well. Um, she basically did what the, the master level is right yeah. now up on the site where you did the five pack with me and had access to all the things. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and so, oh, you're so welcome. Um, so right. yeah, we, we look forward to having you in the community. And, and Jen, I just want to say thank you again to you so much for coming and so bravely sharing your story with the world. I really appreciate it. I know, um, yeah, you give hope to so many and so many women on here are so feeling so inspired and hopeful. So thank you. I mean, it's what helped me, you know, like you have to have those stories of hope. You just yeah. do. Yeah. Because yeah. they're yeah. out there. And you they're can out there. Them. Yeah. They're out there. Yeah. They're out there. That's why we do this. I mean... Because other, you know, it's like I was on an interview earlier today and I was like, I said something like, we're not making it up. Like we have real, I was right. like, we have real life people that like come and share their stories. Like these women are in their mid forties and they're doing it. Like mm -hmm. these are real life people that were told just like you, 1% chance this is never going to work for you. And here you are, um, healthy, beautiful baby girl that you conceived naturally after, you know, the, the, unfortunately the system failed you, you know? And so it's, um, the only way to start shifting that is to continue to share stories. That's it. That's the only way to do it. So. Absolutely. So true. So necessary. Mm -hmm. Again, like once I saw, yes, you can get pregnant, it shifted my entire world because it was yeah. a whole book about getting pregnant over 40. So you know, I think about these stories and like, had I, yeah. it just helps so much. Yeah, I know. It keeps you going. It keeps you going. Keeps okay. You going. I'm going to let you go and go back to your family. And thank you so much again. Yeah. And thanks to everyone for being here. Yeah, that's oh. yeah. Everybody's saying so proud of you. Do you see the comments? This means so much I, to me. Thank I, you for sharing. Um, But they're so nice. Yeah. It's like, um, let's see. What else did they say? Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. I'm giving you hearts, loves. Um, really? Beating myself up as hard as a perfectionist. Um, but yeah, anyway. Amazing. Everybody's so amazed by you and your story. So thank you. And then go give that Ruby a big kiss from me, okay? I will. Um, okay. Great to see you. And great to see you, my love. All right. Okay. You're welcome. Okay, bye. Bye. I'll let you X out and I'll say goodbye here. Aw. That was so lovely. I am always so honored when um, one of my clients wants to like come live and share their story with literally the world. I mean, because this is on Instagram <laughs> with my 20,000 followers. It goes to YouTube. It, it gets a lot of views. And it's, uh, yeah, it's an honor to me. Um, but even more, I know it provides so much hope and um, faith for you guys. So thank you so much for tuning in. And there'll be another one tomorrow morning. And there's another hot seat tomorrow afternoon. Then there's another story of hope on um, Wednesday at some point. I'm not remembering when. And then another one on Thursday and hot seats those days too. And we'll be giving away scholarships on each of the stories of hope. So please tune in, be active the way Miss All Me, All Me. That's what I'm calling you. One day, I'll, one day soon, I will know your full name because you will be in my private community and I will get to know you and I cannot wait. Um, and for anyone else who's interested in the e-course and the work that Jen and I did together, um, and really all the women you're going to see this week, um, head over to amyrop.com slash yes, and you can see uh, there's the basic level, there's the group coaching, and the master level, which is only a few spots left of actually working one-on-one -on -one with me. And there's, a, I think, four spots left for the group coaching. 
the basic, um, we have as many spots as needed. Uh, enrollment will close in, uh, on Thursday evening. So you want to grab your spot and because we don't open enrollment again for another year. And even if you just do the basic and you were hoping to do one of the higher levels, you can add on coaching when, once you're into the program. So keep that in mind. And, and I do love that too, where you can get a very detailed specific plan and then use the course, especially if you're more of the self-starter type and you really just want the community and the support and access to me every week in the Q and A's, you know, that's a huge piece to the work that I do with all of my girls and that my coaches do with all of their girls when, when they're active in the e-course, um, it just, it, it really accentuates the work and you get the access to me. And then my team is also in the, um, in the private community as well, just supporting everyone in the community. And so it's so lovely. So anyway, go check it out, amyrop.com slash yes. Enrollment's going to close in a few days. And I'd love to see you guys join because then I get to know you and you get to be a part of my private secret community which is an honor. And then I get to um, see you transform and achieve your dreams. And then one day we get to do one of these, A Live Story of Hope. Okay, good night. I'll see you all in the morning. Have a beautiful night. Thank you so much for tuning in. And thank you, Jen, again, um, sending so much love to you. Good night, good night, good night.